Hello folks, let's jump in. By the end of this video, our game will load the next level after we kill all the enemies in all the waves so that we can kill more enemies in more waves. Yay! I love how when I open my project now we get this blackness and you can see <laughs> the fog until we zoom in closer to our level. So let's go into our game script and if we're going to want to be able to load multiple nav maps or levels, we're going to have to store those somewhere. So let's start at the top of our game script and we'll export an array of packed scenes and we can call this var levels. Oh my gosh, I'm calling things level again. That's all right. And then over here, we're going to have an array size of zero. So far, we have three levels. So let's go down to our level directory and under our level generator where we have the generated levels. And I'm just going to move these three levels. Oh, that was cool. Into the levels array. Look at that. We even get a little preview while we're dragging it across the viewport. <laughs> okay. Now, in our game script, we can access these levels. So we're not going to use an on ready variable anymore. Let's get rid of that. And this, the nav map isn't going to refer to the navigation node that's currently in the scene here. In fact, we're going to delete this one because we're going to load it in our script so that we can swap it out later. And we'll probably want another variable that's going to hold the current level we're on. So we'll say current level. And just for fun, why don't we export that? So <laughs> when we load up a level, we can just, just see if it works that we can load all three of those levels. Um, we should probably set this to a default of zero. Now we're going to have to create that node or we'll probably get tons of errors. So in our ready method, let's delete all this stuff. And instead, we'll create a new method called add nav map. And under our physics process, let's create that function. So we're going to add nav map. And in here, pretty simple, we'll get the scene from our levels array. So remember, levels here is going to be an array. So which element in that array do we want? Well, we're going to get the current level, which is zero. So we'll get the zeroth element in the array. And that's actually a scene. That's not a node. So we're going to want to instance that scene into a node. And then we'll add a child to our game. OK, uh, well, let's see what happens. So in our seat now, it's looking kind of bare because everything is being generated programmatically um, in scripts. But if we run it, do we get a level showing up? We do. And it breaks. Ooh, I was clearly trying to move here. OK, so it breaks in where does it break here we go on function timer timeout in our spawner script so we're actually in our spawner script here if i expand the scripts here we're in spawner script and that's because the spawner is using a variable called nav map um, which is no longer connected because how does it find the nav map oh look at that it's going to the parent and trying to find the navigation node which no longer exists necessarily when this node is ready uh, because the game is loading this navigation node programmatically. So let's remove this as an on ready var. We'll just create a variable nav map. And let's use a set get. We'll create a setter. And what the game script can do is set the nav map for the spawner once it's been created. So then I like having my setters and getters at the top here. We can create a new function for set the nav map. We'll pass it a new nav map. And this will be helpful because we're going to want to reset this every time we change the level because, of course, they're going to have different navigation meshes that the enemies are going to have to navigate around. New map. Let's say new nav map. And we'll just go nav map equals new nav map. And now we're just going to have to use this. We'll just have to set the nav map in the game. So. We'll go here. Do we have a reference to the spawner yet? 
doesn't look like it. Uh, but if we're only using it once, here we're going to add the nav map. Uh, we'll add it as a child, and then we'll just get the spawner directly. It's one of the few things left actually in our tree, in our scene, when we start. So we'll go spawner, and then we should be able to get set nav map. Hopefully, is it should, there it is. And we'll give it that new nav map. Uh, let's clear this stuff. Clear these errors, and let's run this and see what happens. Okay, so do we crash when it works? All right. Okay, so we have level one loading up. So now somehow we need to know when the player has killed all the enemies so that we can load up level two. So here we're probably going to want to go to the spawner node. And down here in our start next wave. So currently we check and make sure we haven't gone over uh, the number of waves. But when it's done it doesn't do anything else. The game just stops, right? So now let's add an else condition here. And this is basically means the level's complete. Anything in here. So what's going to happen when the level's complete? Well, we actually want the game to do some things, right? We want it to destroy the current level, like queue free it, and then we want it to load up the next level in our levels array. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll have the spawner emit a signal that the game can read. So let's we'll create a new signal here at the top. Let's go signal, and let's just call it level complete. And then down here, we'll emit that signal. Beauty. And an easy shortcut to get that, get a method into our game is in our spawner over here in the node. Oops. There we go. Um, we are custom level complete signal should appear, and we can connect that to our game script and it's going to be a, a function on spawner level complete perfect and there it is we are back on our game script there and now we can change the level so why don't we since this is a, a signal receiver here let's just create a new function called new level and anything we need to, need to do we can do in there which <laughs> we can just create right above it but it'll help later on if there's some other reason we want to create new levels. We'll just have a one method we can call. Okay, so a few things. Obviously, we're going to want to add one to our current level. We'll delete our current nav map. Should be able to queue free that. That's not auto completing for us because it has no idea what a nav map is. So why don't we tell it it is a navigation map. Oops. Give that the type hint. Just to make sure. Q free. There we go. And now I think we can just call add nav map, the method we created earlier, because it's going to regenerate that map using the new current level. And it'll add it to the scene tree as a child of our game. It'll update the spawner, telling it it's got a new nav map, so that any new enemies that are spawned will be using that map's mesh. Uh, what's going to happen? Let's give it a try here. Okay, well, why don't we just tweak these waves a little bit. So in wave one, I'm just going to make it one enemy. And wave two, I'm going to make it... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, eh. Sure, three enemies, was that our default? And we'll do um, half a second. So this can go really fast. So each level will have two waves. It'll go really fast and we can see how it goes. <laughs> so the way enemies always spawn in the same location. So we should probably like randomize the seed, set new seeds. Oh, that worked. It changed levels. No new enemies. Okay, clearly we got some work to do in our spawner script. So let's go to the spawner script here. Actually, let's go to the game script. And when we add a new level, after we add the nav map, 
we'll want to do a couple things actually. We need to move the player back to the middle because the new level might have an object or an obstacle where our player currently is and we don't want him to get stuck in there or go flying because of some weird collision that happens. Um, and then we're also going to reset the spawner. So let's start with this one. And I'm just going to go, we already have a reference to the player here. Yes, player. So let's go player, um, reset position. This is a function that doesn't exist yet. So we'll go and create that on the player, in the player script. We'll do it between the physics process and the signals. So we're going to reset the position. That should be pretty easy. We'll just go get the global transform dot origin and we'll set its position to vector three. We'll go zero on the X, zero on the Z. And then for the Y, let's do it something like three. So we have gravity now, so it'll appear at zero, zero on our map, but a little bit in the air and then kind of like fall down back to the ground. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious if that's a bit too high. Maybe if the player's moving around, he might be able to somehow end up on top of an obstacle. That would that would be neat. Okay, so is the player going to reset? Let's just make sure that works. Cool. He re <laughs> I was basically standing there, but we saw him fall, so that's running okay. Um, so the spawner now. So let's go back to the game script. And we'll kind of do the same thing. We'll just go, uh, we don't have a variable for the spawner, so we'll just go spawner dot reset. Sure. And let's go create that method. It doesn't exist yet. So in our spawner script, um, we'll do it underneath start next wave. And we'll have a reset method. So what are the things we need to reset? Uh, well, we'll need to reset the current wave number and if you remember we started the current wave number at negative one because every time you start the next wave it's going to increment it um i don't totally remember why we did that uh, it's going to increment it by one so it'll actually start at zero but just remember that we're going to reset it to negative one okay and then i think after that we can just call start next wave and it will do everything we want for us so let's try that um, okay. You guys get bored of watching me test everything out? I should just give them all. Good, good. I fell back down. Oh, we got an enemy spawn and we had an error. Ooh, okay, okay. So we're slowly making progress. Uh, there's a problem with the path because get simple path on base null instance. So nav doesn't exist, nav is null. So we need to tell the enemies uh, how to find the levels navigation mesh and stuff, right? So I think that's probably gonna be when we spawn an enemy. So let's go back to the spawner. And where do we spawn an enemy? Oh, uh, <laughs> we don't have a method yet. It's still all in this uh, signal. Um, so I think I'm going to take this all out because I don't like having all this code in the signals. So let's take all this out. I'm going to control X that and I'm just going to call uh, spawn enemy method that doesn't exist, which I will create here. I'm just going to create it above all the signal stuff. Function spawn enemy. Yeah paste all my code and then go shift tab to pull that in okay so I didn't change anything there we're just so if there's enemies remaining to spawn we'll spawn them and do the other stuff okay so now in our spawn enemy script we instantiate an enemy node we give it a location uh, so maybe after we give it a location we're gonna have to set its nav map so how do enemies now? Let's go. Let's go to an enemy here. Let's go to our enemy scene. 
it on my go to the enemy script and how does it get the nav map oh it's doing the same thing our spawner was doing it's just going out directly and just just getting it right so we're gonna have to clean we'll fix that up too so now nav is gonna be we can be a little more precise there nav map let's be consistent nav map we'll do the same thing we'll create a setter called set nav map and then here at the very top new nav map nav map equals new nav map colon okay i think that's all we needed to do oh i changed the name so i'm right here in our update path method let's just change that to nav map so we're consistent across our code about what we're referring to here okay i think we can close the enemy because now in our spawner script in the spawn enemy we can go enemy eh, dot update up date nav map why why don't you understand that um i don't like that why are you not recognizing it's called nav map oh it's called set nav map duh uh, spawner script dot set dot set what okay um, let's stop stuff that's happening and clear errors okay and uh, I'll minimize that a little bit now this time enemy dot set nav map beauty oh uh, and we have a nav map here yes so it will already have been set because it the nav map is set as soon as the game loads a new level and then you know after a bit of time the first enemy will spawn it will get the nav map set before it's even added to the scene and it works we'll find out when did the error happen Good, good. Um, yeah, okay, it worked because the error didn't happen. Because. The, he, he, he. I'm not sure why, but right now, playing this level, I just really noticed the smoother movement we, we did last time. Okay, so we got one final error to deal with, and that's going to be this <laughs> when we finish the last level. So we'll have to add something to, oh, look at that, right here, our new level. Hmm, so before we do any of this stuff, we only wanna do that if there are levels left to be added. So we'll go if current level is less than levels dot size. Levels is our array. Then do this stuff. And if it's not, then you win. There we go. Um, why don't we see if this works? In my game, I'm going to set the current level to 2 and just see if we start at the last level. That's the big one. That's it. And let's see if we can win this game. I almost didn't. Uh, you win! Nice job.